Hello, this is Aaron Yazer with Davis County Public Schools. I am your technology integration specialist and I come to you with news about Infinite Campus. This video will assist teachers currently using the old instruction module with the Java Gradebook, which expires at the conclusion of this school year, in transitioning to the new campus instruction application in preparation for the 15-16 school year. Uh, and this video should introduce uh, the new and the redesigned tools available uh, to all of us users as teachers. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about um, how to find and access the new campus instruction, uh, how to set and configure some preferences, uh, seating charts, roster, attendance, and then finally the planner and gradebook. Uh, so let's get started. To open campus instruction, if your screen looks like this, you will want to navigate to the top right and click campus instruction. It will change the screen appearance and now all of our tools on the left mimic what was, I'll go back, what was uniquely underneath this one tab called instruction. Now you may or may not have all of these other menu options but all teachers have this one called instruction and you're used to seeing these items beneath it. At the end of this school year this tab will go away and you will need to depend on campus instruction. All right. So as soon as we get onto campus instruction, let's scroll all the way to the bottom and look at account settings. When I click on account settings, you'll notice that you've got the same four check marks that you have gotten used to in the old version. And now we also have this little drop down at the top. And I suggest you all right now uh, log into your Infinite Campus and change this right now to go to campus instruction. As a teacher, you're almost always coming in just to do attendance and do grades, and so you will want to do campus instruction. Go ahead and click that and click save. All right, I'm gonna go back up to the message center where we started. Just to point out that these are our messages, just like we used to see at the very front splash page of the old version. The next thing we'll talk about is the attendance. We'll skip over planner and gradebook, and we're gonna go to attendance. Now if you're looking at this in the morning or the middle of the day, you're going to see right here where my mouse is uh, the typical uh, countdown of how many periods you have left to post. If I go ahead and click on attendance now and choose a class with uh, a list, you'll see this doesn't look all that different than what you're used to. You're still going to see the same present, um, absent, and tardy. We can click on a name and it will bring up um, a small little uh, overview of a student and it will let you click back and forth according to which class period. Also you can switch back and forth to a seating chart uh, which is what we'll talk about in a little while. Let's click on roster and this screen is also improved. The big difference here is again you can you can click on a student name like we did well ago in, in the attendance module uh, but now what's nice is it's got all of our flags all on one screen rather than having to go back and forth between screens like the old version and then it's also got report options that are conveniently available here as well. Seating charts is next on the line and on this view they're all already set up but you will be able to click on a class and down here you'll find uh, a new layout option. I'm going to go ahead and click on open chart just to give you an idea of what it looks like. This is completely redesigned from the old version it's much much nicer. It's one of their best features in the new upgrade. You should be able to take a student and drag and drop that student to another seat uh, you could drag a new seat wherever you want. Oh, if I let go in the right place. And then add a student um, as you need as your class expands. And let's go to post grades. All right, in the past, you are used to using grading by task and grading by student uh, when you are putting in individual grades, certainly for final exams or if you are doing standards based grading in the primary levels. Uh, and so you'll commonly use that and there's no longer a tool called grading by task or grading by student. It's all done in this new category called post grades. But you'll look at the screen and you'll see that you still have the post by student uh, in this area. You still have your fill options. Otherwise these tools are the same. Um, also let me jump down and just show that there are reports for attendance, reports for gradebook, reports for planner and for roster. I'll just click on one of these as an example and you'll see that the screen asks you for which type of report that you want and so I'll just click blank spreadsheet as an example and it opens it up as a PDF just like it did in the in the previous version so nothing nothing brand new there 
All right, let's jump back up to the top, and now let's get into Planner. The Planner is where you'll see a calendar view of your course sections and assignments in either a curriculum or a schedule view, which are up here at the top. And you can arrange the display of the calendar by month or week or by day. Uh, you can go back and forth between those, uh, so it's very easy to navigate. If you click on the specific name of a course, of course, if you hover over it, it will tell you a little bit. If you click on it, uh, you're going to have some of these options uh, for reporting and for assignments. Uh, I'm going to go into greater detail about these later when we go to gradebooks. I'm going to close that for now. If I click on the sections or class periods, it will also show me the roster. And if somebody had been absent, we would see that up at the top. And that is printable, by the way. Um, if I go closer uh, to what's been assigned already, you'll see that these are the um, ongoing assignments in this class. It will bring up the assignment detail. And again, we're going to go over this in more detail when we get into Gradebook. Also, notice from this page that I can go straight over to Add Plus and create a brand new assignment if I want to, all from this screen. And I could have scored it in there as well. So just within the planner, you could do almost everything you ever need to do without ever having to go to the gradebook if that's the way, the way you want to do things. I'm going to go ahead and go up to the top left again of my screen and click on Gradebook. And Gradebook, you'll see, is going to come up with a completely different look than the way we're used to seeing things uh, in the old Java-based gradebook. All right, to begin with, let's uh, ignore the, the grades and the assignments and jump around to settings. Uh, again, one of the improvements in this gradebook version versus the old gradebook is that you used to have to go to several different screens uh, to do any one thing, to set up your grade calculation options, your categories, and if you're waiting to make assignments, um, all had to be done in different tabs, none of which were the actual gradebook. So the improvement here is that it's all on one screen. But in order to fit it all in there, there are these options, like you see where my mouse is right now, that will expand or collapse all the information on the screen. So in this case, we want to go to the settings, so I expanded that. You have options for the gradebook setup, your preferences, and your assignment sort. Uh, you can play with these and, and figure those out as you want. You see that these uh, will turn on and off the sparkline graphs or the color shading um, to the assignments on the right. But let's go ahead and just look at some of these items. We're used to clicking on grade calc options in the old version, so this is very similar. If this is the first time in the year, you may have it checked on um, no calculation, and you'll want to change it to in progress, and it will expand to these options. And depending on whether you're primary, intermediate, middle, or high, this will all look different. And even between the schools at those levels, this will look different. But you're going to have somewhere on here that is an in-progress grade where you can set your grading scale and determine whether you want to weight categories or use scores percent value. And then as you scroll up and down, if you are in a school that uses composite grading, that should already be put into effect here and will likely be locked out so that you can't change it. If everything looks correct after you've made those changes, you can hit Save. If I go to Categories, the next option on the list, this is where you're going to, again, start off blank at the beginning of a new year, and you'll want to create a new one or just hit Add down here. Uh, you'll have to have at least one category, just like before. Some people just leave it called Grades, and everything goes in there is called Grades. Uh, other people have them very specific by uh, daily work, test, and so you would also sometimes see those weighted. Otherwise, these options are very, uh, very similar to what you've used in the past. And I will close that as well. All right, so I'm going to collapse the settings. I'm going to look at my screen. Let's just notice that we can look at the students themselves and click on a name. And it will again bring up our short little summary screen. If I click where it says students, notice that it will change the sort back and forth as I click on it. And so you can always sort from the bottom or the top of your alphabet. You can sort according to any one of these assignments. So if I were to click on that sort button right there, it would sort the entire assignment. Same thing with any of these. Pick one where there's different grades. There you go. And you see it sorts all the highest grades at the top regardless of their name spelling. Um, just like we could expand and collapse the settings, we can expand and collapse 
the settings of any one assignment. And notice that the screen expands. And so now I see lots of other options. I can put in the score in this location. I can put in a comment. I can choose tags if I'm going to use those. Or I could even fill a, a multi-score. If I wanted to hover over the name, I'll collapse this again. If I want to hover over the name of assignment, notice that a little box pops up that gives the full name of the assignment and then it also shows some statistics with mean, standard deviation, range, uh, and medium. And you can use that as you need to for any kind of data analysis. If I wanted to pull it up and edit it completely, I can click on the name of the assignment and it will bring up the full assignment detail once again. All right, and that brings us back to fitting things on the screen. In this case, we've got all of our assignments, we've put in grades, but how would we actually check the composite grading? And so I'll expand that and see that now this is compositing the categories that have been created. In this case, I don't have any grades in for these two categories, but I've got everything in the grades. And it is showing our points, possible and percent, just like the old gradebook did. And in my screen right here, this is where we have the button post. And this may be missing if the posting window is not open at your school. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking something's wrong, I don't see a word post there, it may be that it's just not an appropriate time of the year for you to be posting grades and somebody at your school has that turned off. Uh, this is your sparkline graph right here. And this is a, just a little bitty view of your class. And in this class section, it's really not a great picture, uh, but you will sometimes see that this area right here uh, that is not the pink color will have an up and a down um, visual effect and so you could use that to um, just call a student up to your desk and let them know hey I've been looking at your grades and it looked like your grades have been you know tailing off lately or you call a student up and says hey it looks like the beginning of the year your grades were very poor and this shows me that your grades have been improving also if you see consistency among all the students in one area then it tells you as a teacher um, what areas you need to work on to improve your teaching abilities. If I click on any one student, not necessarily their name, but on the row of their student, it will bring down the picture of the student, uh, their ID number, a little bit about them, and then also bring in this spark line, uh, excuse me, the box and whiskers graphs, which again is uh, statistical information for how the student is performing in comparison to the rest of the class. Keep in mind that you do have um, resources at your school. Each school in the system does have a teacher coach and a building coach and they are ready to uh, accept your questions at any time and if they have questions they know how to get a hold of me and other support staff in the district so please don't be uh, scared to get a hold of somebody. That's what we're here to do. Thanks for listening.